Hi, I'm Carly McAvoy. I want to go through simplifying radical expressions today for those of you that are struggling with that a little bit on your homework. Um, when you have a radical, ex when you have exponent, I should say simplifying two radical expressions because sometimes you have a radical to start and you can change that into uh, a more simple radical expression or you can change it into an exponential expression. So these are the um, eight expressions I'm going to work with today. They're expressions, there's no equal sign, there's no equation there. This is an uh, exponential expression, it's got an exponent in it, and I can change that to a radical expression. This bottom number represents the root when it's as a radical or the index. So this is a cubic root, and this power on the top is what's going to be there. So that would be equivalent to that. So, and the problem that you have on the homework and on the test, I think it's on your final, is that you're asked to say, are these two things equivalent? So you have to be able to switch those and simplify those to C. Now, this one, the root is on the bottom, which is 5, so that's a fifth root, and then you have x to the third. So those two things are similar, but different. So you need to remember it's the bottom number, that's your index, the top number is your exponent in the radicand, that's that number under the radical. When I have something like this, this is the same as saying x to the 3 over 1 times 1 over 5, which is x to the 3 fifths, which goes right back to this, right? It's the same thing as x to the 3 fifths, so therefore in the radical form, it would be the fifth root of x to the third. So these two things are equal to each other. When I have the same index, I can multiply, and I multiply x uh, variables here by adding their powers. So what I have is the fifth root of m to the second and m to the first. And if I add those together, I get the fifth root of m to the third. Now why I used m there and not x, I don't know, random. But you can see that if I had used x, that these would be, these all three of these are the same expression when you simplify them. What about this? Well when you have x to the three over one, times x to the one-fifth. The rule is if you have a power, the same base, and you're multiplying, you add those. So here you have a power to a power, you multiply. But here if you have two different powers and you're multiplying the expressions, you add your exponents. So that's the same as um, x to the sixteen-fifths. And that's different totally than what we've had before, right? So we'd find a common denominator and then add those together, 16 fifths. So that's not equivalent. This one's not equivalent. These three are equivalent so far to each other. What about 5 to the 1 third? Well, again, I have a power raised to a power. So I have 5 over 1 times 1 over 3, which is x to the 5 thirds. That then matches this one, x to the 5 thirds that I started with. And so that's the cubic root of x to the fifth. So 1 and 6 are the same. Um, 2, 3, and 4 are the same, if I had the same variable, but this one is just randomly different. What about number 7? Well, if you have the same index and the same radicand, these are like terms. And this is like having one of those and another one of those. So that answer is just going to be 2 and then the fifth root of x to the third. Again, something very different than anything else we had. And the last one, you're actually dividing. Remember what you have here is x to the 3 over 1 and x to the 1 fifth because this power is 1 and the root is 5. Remember the root is our denominator. The power in here is our numerator. And so the rule when you're working with exponents is that you subtract if you have the same base. And so I would actually subtract those. And that is going to be x to the... Um, that would be fifth, fifth, this if I multiply by 5 and by 5, I get 15 minus 1 or 14 fifths. And that's very different than what we had anywhere else either. But what if I had instead just x and then the fifth root of x? Well, then I have x to the 1, I'll say 1 over 1, minus 1 fifth. And then I would have 5 minus 1, x to the 4 fifths, and that starts to get closer to what you might have had in your homework. But these are the eight different things that I would want you to be able to simplify 
um, to be confident that you could simplify any of those expressions. All right, have a fantastic day, and we'll see you next time.